Welcome to this edition of the Million Dollar Mastermind Podcast. This is where we pick the brains of high achievers from all walks of life and get their hard-earned, real-world insights on winning. I'm your host, Larry Wydell. Well, I'm a, a, a little miffed right now because I really want to continue and find out about how you took it from your first thing in Whole Foods and got it up to over 200 million in revenue. But we're going to have to come back because I want to hear about Undaunted, the book. Yeah. And, and what got you to the point where you said, I've got to write a book on this? So uh, I call myself an accidental entrepreneur. I'm also an accidental author because yeah. that was never on my bucket list uh, to write a book. Um, but I was taking notes along wow. the way because when I would take notes on some of these stories um, that you know I had no one else to talk to about it because most of my friends were not in the beverage industry and I would right. run into things. So anyway, my notes were about 600 pages over the wow. year. And I kept going back and reading the notes thinking that I would be able to solve the problems along the way. Right. And as I was uh, doing that, and I, I think I was speaking at a conference at, at one point, and I thought, there's so many stories that I have that even if you're not in the beverage industry, uh, are really applicable to people and on, you know, getting started on figuring out, um, you know, what mistakes you made right. along the way, um, moving forward, all these thoughts that I've had that I would share with audiences. And I uh, phoned a friend who has written many books and I said, so how do I? take my notes and put them into some format that could help a lot of people. And she said, you mean write a book? And I said, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and so uh, probably the hardest thing was to actually take those 600 pages and whittle them down. I've easily got a second book. Um, possibly self, self, self editing is the hardest thing. In it's so, but yeah. And I hired, actually somebody to help me, you know, really right. kind of yeah. drill it down. But but it's interesting. I think that the thinking in writing this book was that uh, I am a female entrepreneur. Um, I'm a female CE, CEO. Um, and I think many, many publishers that I brought it to felt like the audience would be really small. That it was... Um, <laughs> That, you know, I wasn't, I was a female executive. Um, oh, man, it's amazing how they just naturally fall into the wrong assumption on everything. Yeah. And again, there's there's your doubters, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, oh, I don't think so. Like, yeah. you know, I've, I mean, they said, is that has the tech industry burned you in some way? No, I mean, I don't know. I guess, like, if I really thought hard about it, um, but, I, I just kept moving forward. I kept figuring out how to keep moving forward and, and stay curious and keep learning along the way. And, and, uh, and so it's the same thing with actually publishing a book. I mean, finally, uh, I ran into Harper leadership, part of Har Harper Collins. And, you know, what they realized is they're like, look, we're, we're going to give it a try. There aren't very many at that time when it was published, there aren't very many. Uh, women executives who have written books and kind of shared their story right. uh, that have been successful. And I said, well, have a lot of them written books? And no, I said, okay, well, also there aren't very many of us either. So, I mean, maybe it's time. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, you know, what's the, wor what's the worst that can happen? And so this book is like, I think what, what is most uh, interesting and exciting uh, for me is 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 it's really exactly what I thought was it wasn't narrow at all. I have plenty of men, uh, plenty of right. people outside of 
in the beverage industry um, that have read this book, that it's inspired them. I've had a lot of C-suite executives that have, are especially over the last couple of years, started to figure out why haven't I gone and done something? I've always sort of thought about this idea, but I've never found the time. I've never wanted to take the risk. Uh, and if this book can inspire people to actually go out and live, yeah, I'm done, right? Yeah. I, I, I've done my job. Yeah. And if, if we can, I mean, there's humor in there. Uh, everybody loves my husband, Theo, after reading this book. And there's a section in there about uh, mold in the water in the early days where we didn't know how to make the product. And he was educating Whole Foods about the fact that uh, they shouldn't kick us out of the store because they had uh, blue cheese in the store. And, uh, you know, it was... Uh, and so, again, like, I think just being able well, to... You know, I'm, but what comes to me uh, from this, and it, it relates, that you can't hear, folks, you're listening to this, you can't hear this too much. Every new idea is a bad idea until it's not, you know, mm -hmm. to everybody else. It's a bad idea. And every idea you come up, that won't work until it does. <laughs> so don't be surprised. Like, I'll give you an example. My, you know, it's like the, when they came up with the... Uh, fax machine you know somebody came up with a fax machine and they they showed it they said well who who will buy something like this you know unless he's got one over there why would i buy one and so you know a hundred percent and and i think it's like uh you it, it just takes it takes one person uh to come up with these ideas um and you know make them successful and then they're a genius my favorite thing to to do today is run into people who were my biggest doubters yeah. and uh and you know i love uh you know tons of people in silicon valley who thought it was absolutely crazy that i was jumping off the tech track um to go and start my own yeah. beverage company um that was not a, a very smart thing to do in their mind and they thought I was going to fail and I'm like wait just a minute ago you were telling me how great I was that I sh was going to do awesome in tech and I was hireable and now I wouldn't be because I went and took a risk and right. so if this risk doesn't work out can I go back to that okay. and the answer is yes absolutely yeah. right I mean the the best employees that I've hired over the years are the ones that have failed yeah. at something. And the ones that can actually own, I'm sure you've got people that you can think of that will actually tell you exactly why it failed. Right. It doesn't mean that they're a failure. Yeah, right. And I think like that's the thing that, you know, it actually ends up that if you go out and challenge yourself and it doesn't work out, that may actually help you to figure out what you really want to be doing, what you're right. What, of. It could be a, it's a fail. You know, it those failures are usually in areas that you needed to fail in because you needed a wake up call and you <laughs> needed a change, a abrupt change of direction, or to get more serious about something. Or, you know, uh, I know when I got embezzled out of uh, I don't know how many millions of dollars, and by my 16 year closest personal assistant, you know, it was like, yep, my fault. I shouldn't have let her anywhere near the money. You know, it's just like, but for every million, you know, what I said to myself is for every million I lost, that's going to be 10 to 20 million that I'm going to save down the road because I'm not going to let that happen to me again. But that happens to people all the time. You know, I've had, you know, uh, all the time. I could tell you unbelievable stories, you know, of the uh, my billionaire buddy who has has his his he he got screwed so many times by accountants. Finally, got his cousin in there, he, my cousin, and then he found out his cousin uh, when he went to buy my friend a down, went to Savannah to buy him a Gulfstream. He also bought himself a twin engine plane for himself as a bonus, and he he kept doing things like this. Like he bought a twenty six hundred acre property for. 
my friend, and then across the street, he bought an 800 acre thing as a little bonus for himself. And when he he got so arrogant, one year he gave himself this is an account gave himself a million dollar uh, Christmas bonus, and finally, my oblivious uh, billionaire buddy, finally that got his attention. He said, "You know, I always wondered why all these corporations." When you wanted to get a check out of them, it had to go through three or four or five different levels. He said, now I understand. He said, now if you want to get a check out of me, you've got to do the same thing. But we all make those mistakes. But, you know, it, that that happens, you know, that's le- life teaching us lessons. No, exactly. And I think that it's, it's really, uh, it is life teaching us lessons, but we have to put ourselves into those places. Yeah, um, right. especially. If we are good yeah. at, uh, at at something, um, right. people expect well. If you're good at something, then you just keep rising, yeah. right? And then you, like I said earlier, maybe you start managing people or whatever. But the create the creation, the sticky stuff, the hard stuff, right? Uh, that you have to make conscious decisions to go and and yeah. do that because. Everyone else around you, family and friends are the worst. They don't want you to take those risks. Right. Right. And I think that it's like, it's up to you. And you've got to be really disciplined to, you know, really go and and make those things happen. Otherwise, they will not happen. You know, next time, Kara, we're going to talk about your podcast and uh, that's one of the things I wish we had time to talk about here. But uh, we're going to we'll we'll do that whenever we we set up next time. I love it. I got the idea that your podcast is pretty darn powerful and people would get a real uh, not only a kick, but they get a lot of information from it. Tell them the name of your podcast. So it's called The Kara Golden Show. And <clears throat> it's funny. Uh, Patty Sellers, who had uh, was the uh, editor-in-chief of of Fortune um, for many, many years and started the Fortune Most Powerful Women. She interviewed me for something last week and she was asking me about it. And she said, how many people say no to coming on your show? Because you've had like amazing people. Um, You know, Jeff Immel from GE and Chip Wilson from Lululemon. And I think when somebody has operated a company as I have, and is interviewing these people. I ask questions that I'm curious about. Right. right. And it ends up to be a dialogue that is more about, you know, operating. It's like right. your colleagues that you're that you're right. talking versus a uh, journalist interviewing them. Um, and so it's a it, it's a lot of fun. Um, but it's also, as I said to Patty, um, you know, it's the the guests. I think are pretty unique. They're not going on a lot of other shows because I think a lot of people don't ask them. Right. You know, because they think, mm-hmm. oh, they're too high level. They're too this. Mm-hmm. They're too this. And um, and I've met a lot of them along the way. And I just call them and I say, I just need an hour. Yeah. You know, have this conversation. But the stuff that you'll learn about uh, failure, about forming boards, about yeah. what they wish they would have done. Um, you know, Jeff Immel in particular, when I interviewed him, I'll never forget. Uh, I didn't expect I, the first thing I said to him is what, like, how do you follow Jack Welch? Like, that must've just been like, did you walk in the door that morning and thought, you know, I'm ugly. And he's I, like, what were you thinking? And I didn't realize this, but he actually, his first official day on the job was nine 11. Wow, I didn't know that either. So he said he couldn't even think about following Jack Welsh because he had so many businesses uh, that were affected by 9-11 and frankly, businesses that he shouldn't have been in. Like it was just so, anyway, so, so like I think my- hats, husband, off, hats off to Jack Welsh for picking the right day to get out. <laughs> totally, you know? But but again, like you start to really get inside the mind of these people uh, that are creating things that are kind of uh, you know against the grain of what people think yeah. is actually happen. So 
But thank you for bringing that up. This is uh, this has been so much fun, and uh, we're definitely going to have to do it again. And, I would love to. That uh, sounds terrific. I'm excited about. I'm going to go out and buy some of that uh, uh, hint. You know, because I've tried. You know why I've gotten turned off of it because I've got I've tried the ones that are the bad ones. You know, with the flavored stuff, and it's exactly. like, man, this is sour. And, you know, but I I didn't know hint was out there. <laughs> So I'm going to go straight to get some hint right now. Uh, and you can get it online thing. as well. And it's, uh, you know, nationwide at Costco and Target and Walmart and it's Whole Foods everywhere. Yeah. Thank you for uh, coming up with the idea and putting it through and making it available. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to look forward over the next few years to see it continue to expand and grow. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Million Dollar Mastermind. If you felt there were any valuable takeaways from this episode, please take a minute and leave us a five-star review. Your feedback is important and really helps us get the word out to a wider audience. Remember, we have a valuable webinar that is absolutely free. Register for it right now at whiteallonwinning.com. Thanks for listening.